You were just gonna have us talk with no with. It's recording here. Oh, I see. I see. We're not using any of that, that stuff in the top. The top. Yeah. We sure. Start, but we're gonna use it right now. Now. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna use what you just said now. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Just so they know where they yeah. go. Ooh, what was it? What was it? Right. They'll never know. What was it? Um. Uh. Welcome to the downside. My name is Jamarcus Cerezi. Uh. I. I'm. Uh. I'm in a good mood. We're trying. We're trying. We got tech. Mm-hmm. Uh. We're doing all sorts of things. But I'm in a good space. Um. Because yesterday, very last minute, yes. two thirty p.m., I was uh, uh, with with my girlfriend. We were shopping. I was I was high, and I got a text from uh, Mr. Anthony Jeselnik saying, "Hey, can you open for me now in New Jersey?" I got a call. And uh, at what time? I'm wondering. I got the 2:30. call first. <laughs> two, oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Well, thank God you weren't free. Well, it was Matt Rife doing another Radio City Music Hall show again, <laughs> Allie. Where were you? I was in Milwaukee yesterday. Thank God. You know, I got her too, and I just ignored <laughs> it. I didn't, I didn't have his number saved in my phone. That's so, so funny. So uh, I've always been a, a real idol of mine, real idol. So it was just very, very delightful. Definitely made me go like, don't get too high in the morning. We had a spin class. I like to yeah. get high for my spin class. And uh, yeah, I just we we Tove and I we kicked into. Did you know you were gonna do half an hour? Like how? No, I didn't ask. I just I just want to be chill. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. Hour three. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Comedians are told to ask like nothing. Like how long you're doing? Where's the show? Really? If it pays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so weird. That's yeah. such a shitty bar to set. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you know with some people you know it's gonna pay well. Do you? I mean, not necessarily. I feel like you, you hear never know. you hear from the bigger people. At least I don't know all of them, but you hear people who are known as like you hear who's known as cheap. Who? Yeah. But tell me later. But who? Wait, so you did you go to you Newark, right? Uh, it- yeah. No, I met him at a, a, his uh, hotel. Uh, uh, I said, "Can Tova come?" He said, "Yeah." And we drove to right. uh, to New Jersey. And then what happened is I had my new material show, which you did. Yeah. But it was it was. Uh, so it was fun. It was at 7.30, so first time I've ever done it, I like I called Paige, who's now in L.A., so it's early, and I said, can you push the show back an hour and a half? I, I asked Anthony, I was like, is it rude if I leave right after my set? And he was like, no, that's that would be great. And yeah. so... Right. Well, that's a, that's a good question, though, because sometimes you feel like the, yeah. you want to stay... Some people would consider they it rude, want to pat sure. on the back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, whoa, better yeah. than me. Yeah. Um, I would have canceled that set show forever. I always said, never doing this show again. I like that Seth show. No, it, is it is a good nice. show. Yeah. I've begged Russell to do it. I've begged Russell fun to do little some room. characters. It is a fun little room. Yeah, have you seen the new space? Was that where we were? No, we were in the small one. I liked how small it was. It is, it is very fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was really the new fun. one's cool. It's a little bit like a dungeon, um, and the Beastie Boys used to record music there. It's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like you could go to a hundred places in New York that the Beast. Okay, but it looks. Like. It feels like that's what was happening there. It's like a dungeon. There's right. like brick and like it, it does feel like. When that. were you there? A podcast. Like <laughs> multiple uh, times. Wait, so you do a half hour on the show? Uh, yeah, and, and like this was. I've never really, um, uh, opened for someone of that level or, or space that size ever. Where like, was it? New Jersey Performing Arts Center, and I think the reason it's famous. You've seen the documentary Comedian. Uh, about Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. he's working on his new hour, yeah. and it's the younger guy who just got new faces back when it meant something, and it ends like the the dramatic conclusion of the documentary is Jerry goes to see at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center the one and only Bill Cosby, oh. and then the documentary, the whole thing that it goes to every like it goes to Chris Rock, Colin Quinn, and all just like. Cosby's the one, and Cosby, he's the greatest of all time. He did two hours, 6 p.m. show, didn't stand up once. Incredible. And, right. and it's, it's just, that's where I was. So uh, when I was out there, I sat on the stool for a second just yeah. thinking about Bill. Well, Cosby sat here once. Yeah. Wow. Bill you have a great ability to sit on a, like, you sat on a stool during your new face, during a five-minute new faces set. He took a seat. Wow. The first joke, yeah. It killed. Yeah. But that you have to be wildly confident to pay to, to sit in a five minute set. Some would say it's crazy. Sure. Yeah, I guess I never thought about that. That is interesting. I do a lot when the yeah. joke doesn't work because I it's because I it's because I sit, and that's the joke. They go, the joke was okay, but look what he's doing with this. Yeah, body. wow, he's sitting. Why do you think this couch is so small? It's just to add a little bit of juice. Yeah. So, very <laughs> cool. 
Uh, uh, very nice. And um, feel free to write in if you were asked before me as well. <laughs> this is the downside. I don't know that I was asked before. <laughs> I don't know. You thought you were asked after me, maybe? Yeah, yeah that would make sense. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. How you doing, Russell? I'm good. I'm good. Um, Can I introduce our guest? Oh, yeah. But then let's go back to you. We are here oh. with a stand-up comedian. Um, was going to do the show uh, six months ago, seven months ago, eight months ago? Yeah, like me. Ali, stand-up comedian. Like a year ago. Writer, performer, Ali Colbert. Hi. Hi. Remember? Oh, Oh, do I remember? I remember any guest can- who canceled on I me. I canceled, and then I ran into you crying in the street. Mm-hmm. That day. Wow. That day. Wow. Um, well, I've never run into you before or since randomly, not even no, in the club No, but space. I felt so bad. I was like, I went through, was going through a breakup. I was like so sad. And then I was going to therapy, and then I was like, I can't do it. I'm sobbing. And then I was crying in the middle of the street and saw you. I was like, it's true. I'm so sad. And you were like, it's fine. <laughs> I... <laughs> I just remember, because it, it was a good, it was a good apology. It was, it was a real, like, sincere. I can't yeah. do it. I'm going through this thing. You know how it, you have a podcast. Sometimes people cancel, and you go, "Yeah, let's put a little more work into this." Why you can't make it story? Yeah. But I saw Even you. If it's fake, uh, I, it was, it was moving. And then, because I, I don't think I, when I was doing my research, I listened to a podcast episode, and it was you were talking just about your partner, and it was like the whole podcast was about like love. Really? And and like everything was amazing and it's never been better. And it was funny, horrible for you, I'm sure. For me personally, it was funny because literally the day before I was like, okay, enough with this. Where love, was I love, saying love. that? Uh, that doesn't sound was it, real. Was it Girls Gotta Eat? <laughs> that, but that was so not when that came out. That came out years ago. There was, uh, it was, uh, maybe I was just an old one, but it was one where you were just, you were very. That episode of Girls Gotta Eat was me talking about how I met my ex. I recorded that like almost two and a half, three years ago, that episode. Sure. And I was like, this is the most amazing love story of my life. Yeah. And, and I then, was like, this is going to be a great downside episode talking about the, the upsides of love. Yeah, uh, it was brutal. I, um, I remember that I was so upset that week that I was supposed to do your show. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to think what what I would, like let's say if I got What's a podcast that'd be like, ooh, I got this podcast. Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mm, would you do Rogan? Yeah. Yes, I wouldn't even yeah. think about yeah. it. Yeah. I'd do Rogan. Like going have... on Johnny Carson. Of course I would do Rogan. God, that's a, that's quite a statement. <laughs> it is. That, it I mean, you're not your calendar. Wrong. That's what it is to me. Um, yeah, what would have to happen if for me to cancel my Rogan spot? And not you dying. You think do it in your her honor. canceling this is the equivalent of yeah, you canceling what? Rogan? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, I'm about? just I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of the highest pinnacle. What oh, would you're have just to saying a whole different cancel. scenario? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, how are you yeah. doing, buddy? <laughs> That's what that was like for me. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. You know, um, weekend shows. Um, you see Titanic. Oh, you know, I've heard it's great. Yeah, I'm yeah. in that. Just, oh, you're in that? Yeah, just for a little bit more. Um, but. Martin Short came this weekend. Martin Short came? Crazy. Very crazy. You know, and also sometimes when the peop- when like super famous people come and I assume they get tickets, they put them in the center second row. So you're just like, oh, I'm just doing the show for Martin Short. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's wild. So, uh, you know when stand-up comedians talk like it's when you say, how was your set? And so he's like, well, the audience was this. The audience was that. Yeah. That's Russell with musical theater. Mm-hmm. He, he calls like the audience fucking suck. He gets today. so mad. He gets so, he gets mad. so mad. What are they? How do you measure their? Well, OK, so I think uh, a of all, it's a weird show to have like a matinee for. So our Sunday matinees generally are like and also the show's been now. I did it towards the beginning of the run and then I went away to do another show and then I just come back for a little stint. But um, now that it's been out and about for a long time, uh, it's 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 got a certain audience that, that, you know, gay pop culture kind of thing. And and now that it's been around and is popular, it's like random kind of like tourists from the Midwest are coming. So it's not, it's like they have fun, but it's not always the like, like theater crowd or like, 
like responsive kind of thing. So yeah. especially for Sunday matinees, they are sometimes like, "Fuck, man!" These the level of laughter Russell expects. Will I know. Blow well, because like your mind, because you can get like <laughs> you can get you know you've had the shows where you're like it's killer and stuff, and then you can like do it and you're like oh man this is so much work today you know because it's a it's a it's not like a easy it's just like it's a high energy show so if it's not you're not getting anything it's like very taxing i feel like we'll go see it anyways good crowd when martin short was there numerous times to see it i really would love to go see it. yeah yeah no um uh uh what what after you couldn't make the podcast though i swear to god i don't know if you started when you started dating someone again yeah recently is that's recent very recently. Oh, God. I feel like I went to your story once. I saw you with a, a woman. I was like, oh, my God. If she got back with her girlfriend no, the no. next day, I'm no. going to be pissed. No, no. But uh, She wanted to get back together, but I didn't because of the podcast. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> I really appreciate that I was like, you know what? No. I want it. You want it. John Marco. <laughs> you no. won't take it well. No. no. Um. Well... Well, I'm I'm glad. I guess I got you in a in a. How long you've been in the new relationship? A couple months. And she's a New York Times investigative reporter. Did I tell you that? No, I did my research. She's a New York Times invest. That what, what research did you do? What research did you do? A recent podcast. Sometimes I tag her on my. A recent podcast. I said it. Yeah. Do you remember what you say on podcast? No. Yeah, you said it. You wow. said it. I gotta tell you, anytime, why is it weird to know anytime, things about? Anytime you tell guests you've done research, you've always freaked them out. <laughs> you always scare them. They always look like, "Where did you hear, hear that's that?" Just, from? That's just, I guess, uh, okay, yeah. You're, if you went on Inside the Actor's Studio and he was like, "Your first movie was this," that you would be like, "What you the keep, fuck?" I, do you I love how John Marco keeps comparing weirdo? this show to like <laughs> seminal shows. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, so casually, yeah. <laughs> making oh. these huge equivalencies. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> um, yes, she's an investigative reporter for the Times. What? What? Uh, any particular beat, as they say? Are they? No, no. There's a. What, that, is, what is this? The CIA? She can say what she does for work. It, it, there's just an investigative team at the. To my understanding, it's just an investigative team at the Times. I don't know that that is then. They then have beats. Do they have beats? She explains to me what a beat is every couple of weeks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, like, can't... I don't know why I'm not clear. Like, when you start dating, did you, were you like, can I read some of your work, or...? I read her work because I've actually been friends with her for years and years and years. So, yeah? And I remember she did breaking news there, and then she became an investigative reporter in the last six months. I've read her work. Is there any particular, like, big story that... Uh, um, no, because she's new to the investigative team, and... That that's a slower role than breaking news. You're not publishing like sure, sure, all sure. the time, you know. But that team did uh, started the Me Too movement essentially with the Harvey Weinstein cases. That was like the invest the investigative. I thought team Harvey got a, Weinstein started the Me he Too. He did movement. start it, but the investigative team at the times, I think, uh, a few of the reporters got a Pulitzer for their work on that story. I think one of the one of the greatest. Uh, because Bill Cosby, I think that whole thing was kind of before formally what the Me Too movement was. Yeah. yeah. But part of Bill Cosby, the, the stories are out there about Bill. They were always percolating. This one, Twitter really could just, like, change the conversation. And he, his team, like, in the midst of, the, you know, the things bubbling up a little bit more, they released a thing of, like, make a meme of Bill. Make a make a meme of like uh, Jello pops, yeah. and everyone made started making memes of like I like Jello pops and raping people, and yeah. that it just like that it was I don't know if that was the moment, but like if you 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 know with like the Google search and it shows like there was a spike here, oh. it was like that moment that it all just just happened. Oh, okay, it was like a windfall of people coming out against Cosby. Yeah, or I just like mean. people paying attention. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, no, before, because I remember when I was doing a tour one time, and this was like 2013, 14, uh, watching the Cosby show in a hotel room, and whoever I was with, I was like, isn't there something weird about Bill Cosby? And it was on his Wikipedia page. You could go. And oh, I remember really? looking it up and being like, oh, yeah. But it was all like, it was allegations then, but it wasn't like formal. Oh, really? But it was like, that was like two or three years yeah, before. Yeah, it was like, Hannibal who had the viral clip. Yes. And then, but like, it was like that happened and then this meme thing happened and like, you know, it was probably Hannibal was the inciting incident, but it's just the way that it. Right. Did you watch Quiet on Set? 
Yes. I just watched the first episode. Yeah. Uh, you finished it? I watched it, yeah. I think it's three episodes, yeah. Four, yeah. 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 Uh, what'd you think? We believe them? Believe what? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> It's it's it, that was something like the Dan Schneider stuff I had heard rumblings of for a while on TikTok. Yeah, you heard it, and then like they would always do the ones the ones that I heard the rumblings of were like, look at this video of Ariana Grande putting uh, her foot in her mouth. Yeah. yeah, only a pedophile would yeah. would write this sketch. And I look at our sketch team, and I've just wrote you a sketch putting a foot in your yeah, mouth, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I don't think this is sexual <laughs> at all. No, it's like 90% of it's weird, and then every once in a while, you're like, I think that's just slime. Do you know what I mean? Like, every every once in a while, you're like, there's just something where you're like, I think, I don't know if that's sexual, or we're, we're like, you know, like, but I do think there's a lot of weird fucking things. Oh, and no doubt. guy, all the videos they have of him, he's so creepy. and So creepy. And like, you know, it's just like, sound like hell. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, this, with, with all this stuff, I mean, listen. The official stance of the downside. Not good what was going on over at Nickelodeon You've Studios. never liked Nickelodeon. Never been a fan. <laughs> yeah. But but I think sometimes when they construct that narrative, they decide like what pieces to add to it. And in the first episode, there was just a couple where I was like, I think you could have focused on the actual assault things rather than the sketch where he sneezed on her. And you said that's a cum shot. That, that one guy was wearing like a, a penis. That like, was so strange. That penis costume thing was I, I, I very funny. I think that funny. stuff, that, 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 it's not, not excusable, funny, yeah. actually. Even if it's a, just a cum shot innuendo on a kid's show. If it's a cum shot innuendo, for sure. But don't you think that, like, you it remember... It is, though. Where, okay, it's but so remember Disney? Is. The whole brand of Disney? Nickelodeon was sliming people. You remember Disney where they said, it, the stars said sex. Yeah. And they yeah. said it said SFX. And the... and uh, Yeah, it, this looking, was much less latent than that. This was really... I mean, the guy had, like, cocks strapped to his that, shoulders. That, uh, yeah, those were cocks. And then she had, like, jizz on her face. And then they were like... She said something like, my mouth can't get pregnant. And then it went to black. I'm joking. But it was like... <laughs> But For a second, I was like, oh, I, I must no, have missed it, that it one part. You're very, right. When you watch it, you're kind of amazed. Yeah, obviously, it's it's like, okay, that's weird. Could it be? But it's like the machine that it had to pass through is also astounding because there's so, there is oversight. There are parents on set. Sure. It's yeah. like that's what's scary. It's just like the slow boil of just like everyone yesing this guy. Yeah. I think it's just the idea of kid shows are obviously kid shows should be made. It's a good thing. But it's like all these adults, all these like comedy writers, like t all these adult comedy writers just running a kid's show and trying to make it funny. And I, they, they try to make it funny for themselves, I guess. And then it's like, no, you, you can't. You need to have some kids... I guess I was going to say you need to have kids in the writer's room to make sure you're... But I'm like, maybe no, we don't need any kids. I don't think the only thing that's funny to adults is sexualizing children. Yeah. No, but you can yeah, see how... I you guess can you see can't how, make it funny for adults. But you can see how comedians <laughs> in a room... How comedians in a room... Uh, by the, without any oversight. You can see Wanna how comedians would like... Yes, exactly. I get it, dude. <laughs> that makes... You, you, we gotta put kids in these rooms if you don't want us to try and fuck these kids. I think... But you look at that and you go like... Should there not be child actors? Because Hollywood is so fucked up. There should not be child actors. AI? We do AI no, up to 18? No, you can't do that. Okay. You, I've never. So, oh, so you think it's better? Better to. I don't know. The kids. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if we need. Those. We have to rechange our stance. Never I mean, mind. They, they, it seems is it as much of a problem in movies? I don't know. Probably. Uh, I don't know. I don't have an answer for it. Um, I do think. Did you watch all that? Because I was a big all I that. I loved all I loved that. All and that. I loved the Amanda Show. I remember the Amanda Shaw. She's very talented. Very talented. She was so talented. Yeah. We do this to our, like, select, like Britney Spears. Like, we just, Lindsay Lohan, we ruin these young. That stand-up was fine. Who, who's stand-up? Amanda Bynes stand-up. I, I mean, I don't, they I did a clip of her at the Hollywood Improv. No, but now it's like, it's like something's, you know. It's, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Something clicked. It, it, and it's just like, you're like, it's crazy because you're like so talented, so funny. From a young age, and it's crazy. Also, how did that guy run so many shows? Like, that's like sometimes where I'm like, I don't understand how it even works. Like, right. how do you I even have time to molest kids? I mean, like, exactly. Like, what are you like? You have all. He had every show on Nickelodeon. Yeah, he was also surrounded by many other creepy, assaulting yeah. men. That was oh, another. I'm like, it's just a coincidence, or they're all lifting each other up. Yeah. That one guy that was running in a group of men that yes. were like following Drake Bell around on tour when he was like oh, 11. Yeah. It was so weird. I didn't get yeah. to the Drake stuff. Oh, Drake stuff is bad. really bad. shocking. Yeah.
bad. You I, know, like not good. Yeah, imagine like a forty something year old coming to your shows when you're fourteen, fifteen. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, you know, it's very yeah. strange. Really upsetting. Well, well. um, <laughs> I uh, I got so I should watch the rest. It's four episodes. I'll check yeah. it out. Yeah. Actually, Dan's doing the show next week. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Ali, we we knew each other, but we we spent more time together at R I P J F L. I know. Oh, wow. you yeah. We were both new faces together. Yeah. <sighs> R I P. Uh, Is it not going to come back? I think something will come back, but like it'll. It was a special thing that just it feels like the flame was snuffed out. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it's just more complicated. Like I think there's I, I, I think so much you know, artists trust it and the agencies trust it and they, they get all their clients to go and once that once that belief that it is solid goes away, it can never really come back. Mm-hmm. But uh we had a good time. Yeah, it was really fun. I thought. It was fun. I uh we, but there was commentary that already here like the the hang wasn't as good. What the fuck? That like who the fuck said, said that? that? Like, not between like com- comedians, but I think like I was kind of shocked that every night there was not like a food thing set up. Well, that's with that's the beginning of the money going away. It was away. just like you'd go to the lobby. I know, yeah. And you could like pay for. It was just strange that there was nothing yeah. offered to people performing. Yeah, apparently there used to be a lot of food free, but that's that's how you. Well, could I would have liked one meal. Sure. Just one. Always Maybe on the night of the performance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, what well, year? This is 2022? 2022. Yeah. First one after they had like their COVID one. Yeah. The LA satellite rough. one. Yeah. That was that was unfortunate for the people who got that. So we kind of really had the last. Oh, there was one after. There was one. One after that yeah, one. But the um, sold out podcast tape. Of <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was kind of. I was expecting. Well, I was only there a couple nights, but uh, I was. It felt like there were things happening there already that it was like they were like you know, kind of pulling back the yeah. There was no there was no like John Mulaney headlining the big place. Our it year. was like no the next year. Our year there was, but oh, then yeah. the year Our after there that was it was Mulaney like and Joe Coy Gala. Joe Coy. Joe Coy. Yeah. Joe but this Coy one... Gala. Yeah. No one for your year. I mean, I didn't get in. I went for the podcast. But you had one of the last auditions That's for JFL so of true. all time. I did. How exciting! And was how that? exciting was that to get prepared? He I, a five I had the minute stomach character flu, piece. and I went anyways because oh god, you got to push through it. And then the thing. next week, it is done. So wow! How many times did you audition before you got it? Can I ask? I uh, I'll be honest: is that I I never auditioned for it until I did. Oh wow! Um, but it was weird that I didn't. Yeah. Like I, I could have, I wanted to certainly years before that, but so I yeah. did it when I was like a little bit ready to go. So you auditioned once and got it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I auditioned yeah. like five times. Sure. But that's like kind of what everyone was doing. Like I thought most people auditioned that many times. Our friend Chris auditioned seven yeah. times. Something like he that. got it on the seventh. He was last for characters. Tech went over. Uh, so they didn't start the show until an hour late. They didn't even get to tech his piece. All the industry left. And all the industry left before By he went. By the time out. he went. That's awful. Can you imagine? That's seven so years brutal. Trying to get in and then be like, boom. What year did they do the documentary about it? That was weird, too. Remember that? Oh, yeah. So that was uh, Rosebud Baker's year where Amazon did a thing where they followed around the new faces. Oh. And, like, you know, it was like, here's them bombing the set at a bar show. But yeah. then it does well on the thing. And some people did well. Everyone, it's it's tough to, I don't know, everyone always has the impulse to make a documentary of stand-up. And they rarely, Jerry Seinfeld is the one that did the best. Yeah. Um, I don't remember and that. And you know why? Because it had that secret sauce. Cosby. 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 Um, Cosby sauce. You were an intern at The Tonight Show. Yeah. Uh, what age was that? 20. That's so cool. I wish I had done that at that age. Really? Why? Yeah. Why? Because you get to like see how it really works for better or for worse. Yeah, that's true. How long were you there? Um, I was there like a winter or a fall semester of my senior year of college. Senior year of college paid or no? Uh, paid minimally. Yeah, paid minimally. I like interned everywhere when I was in school. Didn't you go to school in New York? No, I I went to school at University of Miami, blah, and I Florida did summers or Ohio? in Florida, Miami University, Ohio. Oh, 
Uh, but I did. Uh, uh, I came here every summer. I like New York. You're an NYU kid. Yes. I, I don't. Why did I think you went to Juilliard? Oh I my tell God. people that. <laughs> but That's then, a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah, that's a lie. Oh, you I, don't tell people that. I auditioned for Julia. I've heard you tell people that. That's not true <laughs> at all. <laughs> I've You're never like, I've done my own research. I like you told me that. On a podcast. Like Russell with New Faces, I auditioned for- once <laughs> and did not get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I auditioned uh, for colleges. I auditioned for eight schools, BFA programs. Yeah. And uh, Juilliard's was, was the fire alarm went off in the middle of my audition. And, like, I didn't know how to be, like, to make a moment out of it. I just stood there awkwardly. And uh, Did they, I, were, was anyone asking you to make a moment out of it? Like, were, were the theater teachers I just like, feel like Rob, you, you can imagine Robin Williams would be like, oh, fire. And he'd do, like, a little <laughs> dance. Yeah, 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 and they'd go, yeah. oh, my God, we got to have this kid. That's and I was okay. just like, I was just like. I see, I see. Okay. That's really. Just yeah. stand here for five minutes. You would have minutes. done a whole thing. Oh, fire. Oh, yeah. a fire. Oh, got to put it out. Oh, yeah. water fountain. I <laughs> See, I would have gotten it. I would have gotten that it. That would have been fun. Yeah. yeah. They did. I mean, they 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 gathered all of us and I mean, the energy, the the energy in that room is could not be worse. Oh, it's awful. Every theater those. kid theater being like brutal. for this could be the next 4 years of my life oh. in this one moment. Yeah. And oh. and they're trying to warm us up so they they like have us all <laughs> they do a little acting warm up we're all walking in a circle and at some point they're like and now you're an animal yeah. and of course everyone's auditioning while they're doing this so they're not doing it for themselves they're like everyone's being the loudest animal a lizard crawling oh my and god it was uh what was your audition piece ooh so um one of my big monologues was an audition from the goat or who is Sylvia? Do you know that play? We've talked about it before. A lot. Too much. Maybe. <laughs> Too much for this podcast. <laughs> so, but this was, uh, it was it was a son confronting his father. His father has having an affair with a goat. And his son is gay. And uh, uh, he's saying, like, you, you won't accept me, but you fuck a goat. Which is kind of the metaphor of the whole piece. And Beautiful. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had a, I had a voice teacher... She, she, she was like an opera teacher, so the acting wasn't quite there, but she wanted to, like, give me notes. And she was like, you're not ganging it up enough. And she wanted oh, she wanted me to go into this piece and be like, a father, oh, you're man. fucking a goat. And and I don't think I took the note fully. I bet you took it a little bit. I wouldn't want anyone to see what I did for sure. <laughs> wow. But, uh, so it was that. I had a monologue from Hamlet. I sang... Uh, on the street where you live, Joey, Joey, Joey. Uh, they asked for all that for the like their program asked for song too. A uh, Juilliard, I'm not sure. I don't think oh, so. Right. They said like be ready. <laughs> what song was that? Sorry, are you talking about Dean Martin? No, he's talking about um, what's that show? What's the, the most song? happy fella? Oh, by Frank Lesser, who wrote Guys and Dolls. Beautiful musical. Thinking of a different street where you live. It's an old man. He has a hot wife. The hot wife. Fucks the goat. The the goat. goat. <laughs> Another <then> weird one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which Tisch school were you in? Film. Film. Yeah. Uh, was it good? Was it good? Did you learn it, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest opportunities were in interning and in connecting with the classmates who are all doing. A lot of them are doing really cool things. As a non NYU person, I I tell people like I, if I could go back, it would be like NYU or just start the just start. Yeah, yeah, just, start. just move to New York. Yeah, but I get env- I'm very envious of the NYU kids. Me too. Yeah. Back in the day when we tried to get our sketch team to get like featured in Time Out, yeah, it was impossible. Yeah. And we saw these NYU kids just left and right Time Out features. Yeah, that uh, that sketch team when I was in school, all I mean it was Bowen and Sudi Green, and they all went on to SNL and. Even a lot of the film students are up to really cool things now. And we're like writing with John Oliver, whatever. They're just doing cool things. Well, what was the internship like at the Tonight Show? What did you have to do? Um, like ma- like just like intern work. Nothing exciting. Like I, getting I coffee. I got I would with intern for the writers specifically. I was a writer's intern and I got them breakfast and lunch. And that's really what I remember. Like, I would go into the writer's room and I would get money from each person. And I had this big, like, accordion folder where I would, like, separate everyone's money and separate everyone's change. And I would, like, take, I was like a waiter. And I would take down everyone's 
order and I would go downstairs to the concourse and I would get everyone's breakfast, go back up and then wait, do stuff for 90 minutes and then get their lunch. Did you ever get to see them pitch jokes or anything? No. I didn't oh. get to go into the pitch meeting, but I saw what they were doing and I think I organized drafts with them and I did become friendly with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I was already doing stand up for a few years. So like I would like talk to them a little bit about it, but I wasn't in the pitch meeting. No, that was closed door. Jimmy, the writers, maybe a few producers. Um, but did Jimmy know you? Because I, I remember your first Tonight Show, and Jimmy was like, Allie, my best friend. Yeah, the way you feel? I, um, no, he didn't. I didn't interface with him much. Maybe a few times I saw him in the hall. And then when I was a page, because that was my first job after college, I was an NBC page. Oh, like Kenneth. Like Kenneth. Like Kenneth, right, that's yeah. right. Um, I was, uh, you interview for the different shows at 30 Rock you, you know, to be a desk page. And I was the Tonight Show desk page, because mainly because I had known a lot of the people and kind of how the show worked from being an intern. Yeah. So I was a favorable candidate. And there I maybe got to see him a bit more. But still, you're not, no, you're not working with him or really interfacing with him. But my job was to get the talent from the car and set them up in their green room. I had a friend in college, he, he worked, I feel like it was The Tonight Show, mm -hmm. and where his job was basically to prepare the rooms for the guests, like read the rider, and if it said fresh watermelon, he had to go get that. Mm. Really? And he, he, he used to gossip about like... What was know? his job? That sounds like what I did as a page. That yeah? Was, yeah. You it it might have been that. You set the rooms. Yeah. And... Yeah, you know what everyone's rider is, and we would fulfill all that. I mean, I remember when I was a page, the Tonight Show did the, these weeks in L.A. where they would broadcast from Los Angeles, and I, we went out to L.A. to do the show, and Snoop Dogg had, like, a really crazy rider, like Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles and all these chips and all these drinks, and he didn't even show up. He never showed up to the show. He got too high and, like, couldn't make it there, and I got to oh. take all the food home, and I always took the leftovers home. Wow. That yeah, any other fun. weird riders that you remember? I remember, like, Tyler Perry had, like, everything orange. Like, orange Gatorade, orange soda, or like, orange snack. Like, it was all orange. Mm -hmm. I remember that being crazy. I remember Danny DeVito. We put candy in the rooms. I remember Danny DeVito taking the candy and, like, pouring it into his backpack. Oh. I'm leaving. <laughs> that sounds like you. <laughs> I don't do with candy with like the baby carrots. That's so true, yeah. Recently, I put I put floss on my rider, just so I have a thing of floss. And then That's sometimes smart. they give That's me smart. sometimes they give me uh, like one of the eight packs of floss, and I'm like, well, fuck, yeah. I'm a rich man. Right? Why not take it? What's in your rider? Uh, diet Coke, and seltzer and peanut butter, maybe. Mm. Mm. Oh, you're you're low low maintenance. Wait, what? Am, yeah. What are we doing? Sashimi, brown you, rice. Nah. Sashimi, you're you're asking for sashimi everywhere you go. Yeah, the host you know, of the Tonight Show. Do you, oh yeah, but I'm saying like you're like I, you're when you're going to Iowa, you're asking for sashimi. No, you're not. It's in the it's in the rider. You're joking. You're Are joking. you joking? What's wrong with asking for sashimi? You do not want sashimi in lots of us. places. No, you're joking, right? No, 100. percent I have sashimi in the rider. They tell me if they can't provide it. That's crazy. The, I don't. Oftentimes they can provide it technically, but why would you want it? I don't in a put it because place? I don't put anything in mine because I don't want to make anyone do that because I'm not. I don't. I'm grounded. What? What is it? What's wrong with wanting a thing? Where are you going? That you're you're putting sashimi on like a club rider? Yeah, That's they, not well. They, you can't do that. They just throw that sashimi from somewhere else. I I respect I myself. I don't think that that's good. Now, by the way, what sort of sashimi are you even getting? You're probably getting yourself sick. That's what I'm saying. I'm still alive, am I not? <sighs> alive, feeling yeah. healthy. What else is on this rider of yours? I, I, sashimi and floss, sashimi, that's it. Sashimi, it says brown rice, but if not, that's okay. I let them know. Um, I Healthy snacks. Popcorn. Uh, Popcorn's online. Popcorn. Okay. I do veggies, fruits, and then I had to. I used to go coffee, and then I go, I'm not having coffee at 7 p.m. So I say seltzer, and then they get a 12-pack of seltzer, and I go, I didn't need all the seltzer. I just needed one. And that's that's it. Low maintenance. And it all has to be orange. <laughs> just sashimi. Even the sashimi is sashi pretty diva-y. Yeah. You know that. I don't understand why it's just I'm a not, food. I'm not saying this as a judgment. I'm just saying this so you know what other people think. You know what diva is? Sashimi from sugarfish. That's divish. Sashimi no, I'm just is saying so, the, uh, such the, a high on the 
pyramid food for you to be requesting it is Japan. borderline it's obnoxious. Sashimi, you find it on this floor. I know, but I'm just saying I, <laughs> where you're going, though. You're, there's a lot of places you're going that, A of all, it might not be that easy to get. And B of all, I don't know if you want it from there. Right. Is what I'm, what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think technology has improved to the point where they are able to transport fish to middle America. I know, but I, it's just like, you know, I, I don't know. From a club, though, you're trusting that club's like, oh, we'll get, we'll get the best sashimi in town. They're going to go to the grocery store and yeah. get like, you know. I like just the way you're picturing these clubs, like it's a like back alley. And they, <laughs> they find a I rat mean, and they say, I'll I will never don't... notice at all. We'll cut up this rat. Okay. Have you had good sashimi from any of these places? I, you know what? I, I don't even know. I, maybe I've always had bad sashimi and so it all tastes good to me. That I think is the key to life. Never treat is it ever. Too you're, much. you're. It's always there. It's always happening. It's always Most of there. the time. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Also, are you worried about mercury poisoning? To have that much sashimi? <laughs> like, so do you eat that every night? Well, now, now I am. Yeah. Every night of the weekend, you're doing that. Yeah. My my opener told me he's really sick of eating. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you change it up? Okay. If if I if I were here and I said, hey, uh, my rider is a hamburger. You'd say nothing. No, no, no. Oh, we would. No, that would be You're killing a cow. No. You're getting mad cow poisoning. I would Maybe. be less, less get... full food, more snacky things. Don't you just, yeah. Don't you get your meal, like, usually at the club, and then you have snacks in your room? I can't eat that club food. You'd rather have sashimi <laughs> from the or a grocery what, store. mozzarella grocery sticks store? and a, and a, a yeah, wings? They have a grilled chicken. Grilled chicken, usually. Fries, a burger. Fries? Every weekend? Ooh, we can't. No, but sashimi. Try it. Try it in, in a Midwest state. Just give it a shot. The only place I've ever gotten sashimi that was like, we were going to die. It was in Memphis. And we were performing at a, a music venue. I was with Tova. Her family lives there. And whatever that DoorDash that I ordered was, was, was vile. The rice tasted like it could give you mercury poisoning. Oh, my God. Oh my God. And I, I ate it all. Why? Why? Because I paid. Because I, pay, I paid for it directly. Wow. How long have you been with Tova now? Uh, in October it will be four. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Can I put straight pressure on you and ask if you're gonna get married and have kids? What the fuck? Quick I'm answer. Just curious. Is, oh is that oh like shit. A, okay. Is that like a dream of yours to be married with kids? Oh my god. We're gonna cut this part of out of the podcast. No, uh, I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't know. Four here's, years is sweet. You here's, always seem so in love with her. I'm, I'm very much in love with her. Uh, I here's how I think about both those things. I think so much is how much it's connected to family, mm -hmm. and my family is so fractured and so disjointed, and like I couldn't even imagine inviting my dad to my wedding unless chaos could possibly. Like, he'd say something to my mom. I know it. That all those things, and the same with kids. When I see people who have kids, they like their family. They're, they're there to help. Russell's made very clear on the record that he is not going to help unless he's like, happens to be around. Wait, but I, yeah. So I, mean, not, so I don't you're know. Mar you're married. Yeah. Kids? We're not having kids, no. Um, but wait, I have kids. a question. So Can't you just elope? But if, if your hang up is, is, Having a wedding day where your dad and mom are in the same place. Right, believe it or not, that's not the marriage. Elope. Yeah, just elope. Just elope with some sashimi. Hey, if that's on the There's card, if that's on the at table. That wedding. He's trying to get out of the top. <laughs> No, He's like, let's I, go back to my shitty writer. I, I don't know. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, mean, fuck, I had this conversation last night. I got to have it today on the podcast. What the fuck? The Can I have a break? Tova, Tova texted me, get on the podcast and ask him. I'll tell you the thing that we are discussing uh, more, more concretely, which you Freezing can embryos. understand. Uh, that's already been done. That's embryos? Been done. Uh, no, not embryos. No, eggs. just the eggs. Just the eggs. But, but uh, uh, you, you don't have to freeze your sperm. You actually should. Uh, you should just in case. You should? Yes, you just should. Just in case. It'll, it goes down a little bit as you get older. It does go down, and people don't talk about it. And Rob, a lot of times, Robert sperm Niro, motility is the issue. Robert De Niro just had a baby. He was yeah, 80 well, years old. You can, oh, we can throw examples John out. John Marco like, comparing himself just, once again to a great... <laughs> just because he's, he's a good actor. Just because he's a good actor doesn't mean he has like a, a good cum. <laughs> There's no, there two are not correlated at all. Just to be safe, you should do it because you do want kids. So. But it costs like fifty bucks for men. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. You jizz in a cup. Just what do you? Cup? Who cares? Just do it instead of a sock. That's all you gotta do. I, I've never. Let me tell you something. I've never just never just in a sock. I did it once to be like, was this the thing oh, to do? Yeah. But but when when people say that, 
are they doing? They're doing the whole thing with the sock on, or they're I grabbing the sock more of a kid, right before a young person thing. But are they grabbing it right before? Or they keep it on, the, like, is the sock the sleeve? I don't know. I, it's never been my thing either, so I don't know. It seems like I don't want to do the like after it. You know what I mean? Like, I, just, I would just throw it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if I was a really rich person, and I just threw away my socks. I would, I would try it more. But I don't want to have to wash. I would it. do it with like dress socks. That's soft, oh. but that's a really expensive. <laughs> you better enjoy yourself. <laughs> Um, that's why they did those gold toes, gold toe socks to kind of hide it. So, um, God, could you support me for one second? <laughs> I, I didn't know what you were saying. Uh, yeah, it's a tough topic for me to join in on. Yeah. Well, you're the one who t- t- demanded. <laughs> yeah, no, that I know. I freeze my experiment. I said, okay, I'll take you're your right, advice right. on this. You're right. Do you have your eggs frozen? No. I should get them frozen. At some point, I will. It was a, it was a tough uh, process. Why? Emotionally? Because, well. How much time does it take? Nurse, it was like. Week and a half to two, like it depends. They test you like every two days for your levels of things. But a nurse came in the morning and uh, would inject uh, Tova with a shot of estrogen. Yeah, which is that's you know that's a lot. That's like if you were uh, 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 dating a werewolf, someone injected the moon. And uh, <laughs> then at night there was like a different shot of something else. And then there's the procedure. So it, so they say it's you go through this whole wave of pregnancy. Over the course of like two weeks, like all the feelings of. Did you guys fight a lot? Oh. Oh, we fought. Really? We fought. I mean, because you get so emotional, right? Yeah. Ugh. I think I. <laughs> you fucked mm. up. Ah, no, I can't. There was a moment where it seemed like, where it seemed like I might be getting dumped the day before the surgery, and I said, "No, <laughs> oh no, God. let's wait till one more day, and then let's have this discussion." Uh, and uh, now everything's happy and wonderful. That's good. Yeah, I've heard it's oh, t- but it's a, I mean, it's it's a it's a roller coaster of yeah. of things. Of course. Um. So you want kids? What about you? You and your partner? You want to get married? You want to stay together forever? Is she the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it. I, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would have kids with, I want to have kids with my current partner, but I've been in relationships where I'm like, I would never have kids with this person. Mm. Sure. You know? Sure. And I don't even associate it with that, except now I'm like, oh, I can see now that it's like, this is much more partner oriented than I thought for myself. Because some, I feel like a lot of, some people just know that they want to have children. I don't feel that I don't relate to kids in that way but in like this relationship I'm like oh I could totally have kids I love I love kids yeah in the appropriate way but I don't sometimes you look at people's lives yeah like for example yeah opening for Jesselnik mm-hmm. he's a guy who doesn't have kids and you go wow he, he gets to enjoy his the, the fruits of his labor he's free he's got a nice leather jacket and then you think about my friends with kids do the worst leather jackets you've seen <laughs> Vomit, rain, everything on it, and I go. It's it's more just like, it's a tough, it's a tough slog. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I think um, I f- I feel that way also. I feel like at a certain point though, you are like y- me at least, not you. I would get used to like my life and like would be open to a new chapter of something of something that feels different. Like I don't know that like I am drawn to like just kind of doing the same. Thing forever until I die. But like, if I go to like, let's say I bring my kid to the comedy clubs, what if he doesn't like sashimi? Yeah. What am I gonna do? What? Um. Yeah. I mean, it's also like because of what you do, you have to really figure out. You'd be traveling, like you know, it's a lot to consider. Jim Gaffigan brings that whole family. Doesn't he have like five of them? Yeah. Guess what? One of them's opening for him now. No. That's, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? His son opens for him on the road now. That's what you have to do. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. It's hilarious. As, as a stand-up comic, you're like, so you're gonna you're gonna become a stand-up comedian opening for stadiums. How old is the kid? He's six. he's young. I mean, I don't know for <laughs> six. Uh, I feel like if I were to guess based on one clip I've seen, like sixteen, he's like a teenager. Whoa. Oh my god. I wonder if he has like stand-up ambitions or if that's like a convenient fun thing. Sure. I mean, that's... I hope he has ambitions because that's, that's a good crowd. Yeah. It's a good gig. I mean, Jim Jim called me before him, but uh, Jesus Christ, Russell, I'm going to kill you. So you were engaged. Yeah. How it was public. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a great choice of conversation. Let's hear. Was it, 
how did you did you do an Instagram post? Did you call your friends and loved ones? No. I mean, no. You just moved on, and gradually people found out. If that's not a reflection of the fact that we are no longer together, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was not, uh, yeah. Do you feel differently about proposing an engagement now because of that? Do you go, oh, I'm a romantic? Mm, because I've been engaged? Yeah. Oh, I'm a romantic. In a way, you, well, I've, heard, I've heard you talk about love in a way that, that I would consider I'm, more romantic than cynical. I'm, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I certainly, yeah, okay. I, I, I do know, that, know myself to be a romantic, but I'm trying to assign that to having been engaged. Having been engaged, I'm like, oh, I've been in, like, serious relationships. And, like, I, I don't know. I feel like I, I know how to be in a relationship. Like, I'm not someone who's never been, like, committed to someone and, like, present to creating a life with them. Are you, what was your first relationship? My first relationship ever, ever was, like, my first serious relationship was when I was in college. Yeah? Yeah. That was my first serious girlfriend. I had a guy that I dated, like, when I was younger for, like, maybe six months. But the first girl I dated was for a couple of years, and that was kind of the end of college. When you were dating that guy, the whole time were you like, I don't, this doesn't feel like what I want? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what some, I was like, I think I'm gay. I was like, this is off. I never fully sunk into it. And did you have suspicions before you start dating that guy or yeah, while you were yes, dating? Yes, yes, yes. Sure. I, I always, like, I always liked girls, but I had never really dated. And I was like, you know, maybe I would date a guy that would I would feel right about. Sure. Because I'm always kind of surprised when, like, lesbians are like, and I'm just speaking about lesbians, I don't, gay men, I maybe say this as well, but they're like, oh, I've always dated women. Like Ashley Gavin will say, like, I've always dated women. I've never dated a man. And I'm like, well, I wanted to date a man just to make sure I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, you know. But, yeah, I could have just gone with my gut on that one, that I'm gay. I had a, I had a, uh, I won't place the exact time, but it was like, it was a guy who, I remember there was some woman he was talking about, and he was, I was like, oh, she's really cute. And he, she, he was like, yeah, she she kind of looks like like a dude, and then later he started dating her, and I was like interesting. And then later he came out of the closet and he was gay, wow. really? and I was like, wow, I saw the full kind of trajectory. Wow, I I truly just A B C. <laughs> oh, was, that's funny. It was incredible when he started dating her. I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm taking that to the vaults. I do like that he said he said initially, and then how soon after he said that did he start dating? Oh, I mean, I mean, year, I mean, like it was uh, it was freshman year, that's like, funny. Uh, that's and then and then yeah. Wow. That's funny. I always would date guys that, like, I remember my family was like, you like such pretty boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your family said. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, they're so pretty. They're so good looking. They're like girls. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, I can't even do this right. <laughs> it was so annoying. Like, every, I thought they were good looking. But, like, and then I was like, I pressed my mom and sisters on this recently. I was like, why did you say that? They were like, you just, I'm like, you guys like disgusting guys? They're like, no, we just like gross Men like men. I'm like I don't get. Yeah, it. and they were like, pre- like were they, were they feminine they guys? No, they weren't feminine. They were, were just all like, in boy bands. They were just like pretty, like pretty features and like pretty eyes and eyelash. Like they're just. I thought they were just. I still am like they're just good looking, but I don't think my sisters who are straight like find their attractiveness translates in that same way. Sure. You know, like they're just like. They're attracted to like the gruffness and like the masculinity and just like the like the rough edges of like man stuff. That I'm just like, no, I don't want to deal with that. Mm-hmm. You know, is your whole family Jewish? Yes. Where'd you grow up? Connecticut. Where in Connecticut? Weston. I don't know Weston. Me either. I don't really know Connecticut. By Westport. No, why? It's a little like when you ask about where in Connecticut, you're like, if why? you don't know Hartford, you know, or like one other place, I don't know it. Like, what's the culture of? It was this like uh, rich. Yeah, Howdy. yeah. The Southwest Connecticut, um, next to Westport, which a lot of people know, um, like very like J. Crewy, horsebacky, exactly what you think about. Did Connecticut. you ride horses? No, I didn't. But culturally, Connecticut, Weston as a town doesn't feel like that as much, but that area of Connecticut feels like Greenwich and like that. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. My dad's a horse guy. I oh. Tried it once. Mm-hmm. I hurt my balls. I started crying. Oh man. Never did Does your again. dad still own horses? I feel like his last one he he had he put down, um, just for shits and giggles, yeah. uh, and like putting down a horse is 
it's it's you what? What do you mean? Like <laughs> like a dog, like a dog. I feel like a dog is like there, and you put it down, and then just you know what do you, do? you, you close the, the horse. What do you mean? Yeah, like, yeah. What, what? I'm saying like a horse, like like they. There's a moment where they go from standing. To, oh, I see. To I the see. ground. Oh, see. they like okay. collapse. They yeah. collapse, and you okay. just you normally see horses just being like big. Yeah, and so I just think, That's and I think so you watched the whole body. Yeah, you know, we thought it was a happy affair. You thought, where did I you mean, watch it? Why can't the horse be like put down while it's sleeping? Horses sleep on the floor. I know from Nate Bergetti. Oh yeah, yeah. I just think they're so big. It takes a long. It takes a long time. I think the bigger the animal, the longer it takes to put them to sleep. How long does it take? I'll have, I'll have to ask my dad. <laughs> Say, hey, dad. Well, why did he have to put that? it down? He had to. It wasn't like a choice. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah, he seemed pretty upset about it. Why not yeah. just wait for the horse to die? Yeah, I, it I feels. Just, I, they get, it feels they, like your dad's killing horses. For <laughs> <time>. <laughs> yeah, you're know, like it's always fucked up when it's my always dad fucked murders up when those horses, like, and it takes so long, and they're they're like very <laughs> yeah. trying not to die. They're trying to get away. <laughs> they're sc- they're running. They're squealing. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yeah, but when I was a kid, like was it like the little? Do you go to no, parties no, no, and had my, little ponies my in a circle? My aunt and uncle had like r- horses. And what did you do in it? Did, like, were you did you gallop? Uh, I was six, and I think I probably sat there and. With an adult, you know, I don't re- really remember. Sure. Yeah, it didn't stick. No, well, I just wasn't around horses. You ever ride a horse? Yeah, a few times growing up. I don't, I don't like horses really. I, I always am very aware of the fact that they can just throw me off. Mm. Christopher Reeves is that the guy? Yeah, Chris Reeves. Yeah, yeah. if I, I, I didn't even know about that when I had my horse thing. Really, I would have freaked out. That was big when I was growing up. Superman. How did yeah. he land? I mean, it must have. I mean, not well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not well. Fucking what the fuck? Dude? He landed. He didn't do a parkour he landed, somersault. He landed. Out of it. He, landed. he landed. Turns out he was fine, and then he just yeah. He landed really. What well. it was he landed? He like did a cool somersault. He's like ta da, and then he fell off a cliff oh, right man. there. That was bad. No, yeah, yeah. That was really bad. Oof. What year? But what year? That was before we were all alive, right? I mean, no, I it was in the nineties. I think it was in the early nineties, late nineties. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. He was good looking. He's I saw Superman. an interview. Did, well, he was in other movies too, but I don't really remember him in other movies. Yeah, I saw him recently. He was on the couch. He was criticizing. Oh, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Uh, he was criticizing Brando. Yeah, so he was, he was so in what? Superman. It was like the time when people would go on talk shows and say what they really. It felt. was the Tonight. Sh- it was no, it was Letterman. It was Letterman. Yeah, this is back when Letterman was as big as the Downside Today. Yeah, <laughs> and he he was saying he did a he did a movie shoot with Brando and Brando. He did Superman. With Brando. Oh, Brando was in yeah. Superman? Yeah, he plays... And like, Brando didn't know his lines, and he he, he called him out hardcore. Yeah, because he's like, because David Letterman was like, how was, working, how was it working with Brando? And he's like, honestly, not great. Uh, he's <laughs> kind of phoned it, everything in, and blah, blah, blah. And he like, gave, he was like, gave a very genuine, real and answer. He said he's a great artist, but he's like squandered it with yeah, being lazy. It's really disappointing. And I was like, I was like, damn. Oh, wow. That's it's, amazing. It's pretty amazing. You're like, oh, oh, you could see how people would tune in to like. That's cool if people like just talk shows the then. You, I mean, I just think about like Jimmy Fallon reacting to anyone coming on and saying something like that no. about a major <laughs> no, celebrity. Come on, stop it. No. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We love it. We love it. Adam that. Driver's we great. Love, He's great. He's fun. Let's sing that. a song. Yeah. <laughs> stop talking about <laughs> someone else's words. Right. Um, yeah. I know you guys are friends. Forgive me. I don't mean to I'm bad with him. I, I have <laughs> I have all these old notes. This is when I did the research the first time. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, so that, no. You're like, so how was COVID? <laughs> how was COVID? How, was Dude, how did you get COVID. through COVID? <laughs> did you have forgive me, did you have a, a breast reduction? Oh my god, you do weird research. I I didn't like Google boobs. It was it was in the middle of the podcast. I know, but it's just like, can I just give you a tip? Like the, give me a tip. Pro the tip. way you're bringing up things that I've shared in the context of other conversations is jarring. It's old. It's you're just like, old research. So, you know, I know, but it's like 40 minutes into a we conversation We asked that to I every guest, just else. so you know. Yeah. It's just hilarious. Every guest yeah. we have on and we go, did you have so a breast you, reduction you, at some point in your life? Yeah. And they say, no. I go, yes, okay, I had next a, thing. I had a breast reduction. I did. Um, what are you curious about that for? I, 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 I have a big chest. <laughs> I've always, I, I was a... Uh, I used to think I had, uh, people said I had moobs. We've talked about this. Yeah. I had a guy, and I think about it a lot. I always thought when I was younger, I had to ask my mom, I said, could we, could I remove, like, the fat here? And she was like. You can. Men do. Okay, well, good. I'm glad we got into this topic naturally. So, (laughs) men do it? Yeah. People can remove anything these days. Of course, men do it. 
Where where do they t- where they cut here, or do they cut? No, they don't cut there for a woman. No, for a man. I don't know where they cut for a man. I imagine it's similar. I have I have no idea. <laughs> Let's see, we're gonna have Ali Cordon. Let's ask her where they cut for a men men breast reduction. But, but you you are you expert on the cum? <laughs> expert on the freezing of the cum? It's just so funny. <laughs> I just love it. That's what stuck in some interviews. I uh. So do you want to get a breast reduction? I'm too scared of. I'm so scared of plastic surgery of all of all kinds. Really? I, I, I well, I I don't know enough about the world. But you're but drawn all I, to it. Sure. I think, in my experience, uh, you I you only hear about the only, the only time you really know about the plastic surgery is when it's bad, and I can think of a couple celebrities that I I wouldn't say because it feels so cruel. Yeah. But you see, they got plastic surgery in their twenties, and you're like, you ruined your Good looking face. Wow. And I don't know why. Yeah. I feel like that doesn't happen as much anymore. I think there's it does, someone though, there's someone I... really recently that like I'll say it off okay. off the thing. Because because people get really upset about it and then the, the the celebrity comes forward and they say, I didn't have plastic surgery. And you go like I you go like, I understand that no one should be cruel on the internet, but you can't you can't say that your face is a different face. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. I think even not even non uh, surgery wise, there is a jarring thing sometimes, and maybe you don't notice if you're, you're seeing someone regularly. But I saw someone that I hadn't seen since like November, uh, recently, and I was like, oh, it's not like they had surgery, but they they're doing a lot of Botox and things, and yeah, it was jarring. Where you're like, oh, you're oh my god, like you're you know all of a sudden it's like, it's like meeting someone on a reality TV show or something, and you're like, oh wow, okay, you're you know, have this different thing enough so that it's like kind of scary to even, cause it's hard. Cause sometimes when it's working, we wouldn't know. It's like, Oh, it's great. It looks great. But then there's That's always, what a, I was gonna say there's about always the a tipping surgery. point, you know? Cause I feel like you don't know when it's good. That's how you know it's good. Sure. Yeah. Like I feel like Paul Rudd, but th- there's also thing where like Paul Rudd, I'm like, well, he must've had plastic surgery. That's why he's always so good. Like, that's why people go, he never ages. And I'm like, well, that's impossible. So he must be getting the good kind. But you don't, you just don't know. Oh, I think that's just like Botox, filler, and like skin lasers. Do you do Botox? Botox I've done for years. I mean, that to me is not plastic surgery, though. I understand. Yeah. Where? Here? Yeah. Like, I can't like, like. Would you ever do Botox for? I would never say never. I feel like, God, everyone, I don't know anyone in L.A. who doesn't do Botox. Botox, to me, is not that big of a deal. How often do you do it? Mm, once every three months. Because my sister got chin filler, and I was just like, chin filler? What? Yeah, Did I don't you do notice? filler. I don't do filler. What is the, th- what? Did you notice? I mean, she had, she had a, a, a thing. She was bleeding. Does it look better? Yes, yeah, she's beautiful. All my sisters are beautiful. Uh... Yeah, I think so. She told me, she said, like, well, it's not going to look good now. Huh. Like, filler's about where the light hits. Mm. And, like, I think, like, it feels like a contouring choice. Botox is to do with movement and, like, lines. Uh huh. Filler, like, I know as you age, like, just like your face, like, there's more of like a sunken nature to your face. But I, filler you can also take out, and Botox also also wears off. So those things don't feel, you know. With the Botox, do you ever like try to like look sad, and you're like, I can't look sad and no. communicate. No, not at all. What can't you do? You just can't do this. Yeah, I don't have those lines. It means nothing. All right, we'll get it. Let's do I'll it. Pay for it. We'll do an episode. It's so nothing. It, like goes away in a few months. I don't even know where I'd go to get Botox here in New York. Any of anywhere. The, yeah, Medi Spas. <laughs> oh, the Medi Spas. I think you were or saying like, like the dermatologist. Wayne Reed. <laughs> yeah, Dwayne over Dwayne the Reed. counter. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne Reed. Put in your rider, man. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine sashimi, sashimi and sashimi, Botox, Botox and a breast reduction? <laughs> well, I got one of those. I got one of those vitamins. Vitamin uh, drip. Yeah. Vitamin drip, and I didn't. I don't need that. Was it helpful? No, I mean I wasn't hungover. I don't really. Why'd you do it? Because a, a nurse offered it for free oh. after a show. She was and just there. She was at a show, and she said, uh, "Do you want me to come by, and we'll uh, you and your opener will will I'll give you a free thing." And I looked at the prices. I mean, she was giving us. I mean, normally it was a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
but I didn't feel any better at all. I felt a little bit tingly. I felt a little guilty. And it's just like it's like vitamin C. It's yeah. kind of like, hey, would you like you want yeah. a glass of orange juice, but through a needle in your veins? And yeah. You're like I'd take it the old fashioned way. Right. Uh, but I would like to. I would push myself one day to get like hung fucked up, so yeah. I could just be lying in bed. Yeah. And they yeah, come that's what you need. Do you ever do a sauna cold plunge? You just go into the cold. You mean? Like, uh, you know how it's popular to now do sauna and dunk in the cold. Yeah, I do it. It's it hurts. Yeah. Do you do you do it at home or have you gone to like a place here and done it? Uh, Tova and I went to like a, a spa. We don't have a. If I did a spa plunge, I have to do the cold and then do the warm after. It'd be horrible. Yeah, we did it. Uh, yeah, we did it. You like it? No, I've. I, that should I, be. That's a youth, an aging hack. People say. Mm. We just gotta get used to dying, guys. Yeah. We can't stay young forever. Yeah. But there was something Tova's been talking about. I guess on TikTok they say that all the young, all the people in their twenties, they look older now because they've all been doing all the fillers and Botox super early. Mm. Mm. And they say the the whole part of the philosophy that I don't fully buy is like it's like well the younger people look old and we look great. And I'm like that seems like a bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we that look seems like too. a bias take. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, Russ, you wanna. You want to say something? Come on, Raj. Um, about Botox or about um, uh, young people? Oh, actually, I did meet someone recently, and they in real life, and they were they were like doing that thing where they're trying to make you feel old. They're like, I don't even remember this thing. And then I was like, Oh, how old are you? And they were like twenty two, and I couldn't even hide my face because I was shocked. I mean, they were they looked terrible oh. for twenty two. Oh wow! <laughs> they looked they looked. How bad of a face? I did thought you make? That, I thought that we were like roughly the same age. Like I was like, Oh, can I ask how old you are? I'm 38. And how are you, Sean Marco? Say it. Don't lie. He, that feels. I first of all, I don't lie. Okay. Someone inserted. You have things on the internet that people put that some AI article made that is not accurate, where it says you. You're Somehow dead everywhere, dead. and where John Marco's thing online, it's like he's aging himself four years younger, or someone is someone out there is aging. So do you him. want to correct it now? Yeah. 28. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, 35. Yeah. You're 35. Yeah. Are you self-conscious about your age? No, no. Though I did get a couple uh, comments recently where they said they said I posted a picture of my my face and they said gray hairs in beard. Ew. And I was like, okay. here we go. Well, here we go. It starts. But I don't even want to die. It. I, I don't, don't get why die men it. ever care about their age. Your value isn't associated with it at all. What are you talking about? Your value is not associated with. I your am age in. I am in all. entertainment. That what do people say about Paul Rudd? What's the one thing they say about Paul Rudd? That literally doesn't matter. Men are never being like, you're not, nothing you get has to do with your age. Nothing. That's, you are not I, going to. That's not true at all. That's people, 100% true. People you're value not aging youth. out of anything. You will. You age into getting better pussy, more money, and more work, and you're going to get better at your craft. You're literally, I don't know what you're talking about. I. Wh- there's no fucking way. Yes, there's. No. People, people love what what is it called? Is it called old faces? It's called new faces. You're not compete. You're not even competing no, but it, for those less, roles. You're you're a stand up. It's way less a thing it's for so you. So not, not a like, thing for you. It's way it's less like you're a, a thing, ballet but it's dancer. Not nothing. It's close to nothing. It's not nothing. It's very close to nothing for you. You're it's, a male, white male stand up, and you're worried about your age. Not worried about, about my age. Most successful all, I'm stand ups. About- old white men. There's no. You're not like oh, all no, my favorite stand ups are Rife young white. Matt is currently Matt, okay, Matt, the most other than other than other than Matt, Matt Rife. When when you ask people, twenty eight, I believe. When you ask people who they like, they list old white. That's men. true. See, not, not me. Yeah, yeah, but Maria but, Bamford, Tignataro. Yeah, but. Yeah, no. Ellen Rosie DeGeneres, O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell, <laughs> mostly all women, mostly lesbians, Caroline all white Ray. apparently, uh. <laughs> and Cat Williams. That's the slate for me. Um, so I think you should just feel good about it. I would feel great about it if, if I were a man. For the most part, I feel great about it because I'm a lesbian. Explain that. To- I I just I don't have to. I'm not living under like the male gaze as much, and I don't know why you are. Like you're. I don't know why you care so much about looking young. Back to Paul. Do you think Rudd. it's related to career, or do you think it's death? Yeah, good question. Because it maybe it could be just you're scared of like, oh, I'm older. You know, you know? me, business and life—they are the same thing That's to me. True, buddy. Yeah, death and career death. Yeah, are just equal. <laughs> Oof. Um, by the way, I keep me. Some a fan brought me this. They said I like your Instagram post, so they made me. <laughs> 
Oh, that's right. cute. Oh, that's nice. Did they give it to you to show? I didn't know what you were going to hold up at first. I thought it was like a baby's yeah, bib yeah. at first. It's cute. That's cute. But when Thank they first showed it to me, I, I, was like, I was like, what is that? <laughs> they said, I wouldn't know what that clearly, is at first. Do you hang it up? Well, I don't know. As you can see from the wrinkles, I've just kept it balled up in various places for the last three months. But I, I guess you could. I want to say thank nice. you. They, they made it. Yeah, we could put it on the wall. Yeah, they made it, and specifically because they said I liked your an Instagram post, and this oh, is oh, that's it. nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's so sweet. It's very sweet. It's so wide for a heart. It almost has the right shape. Like if a doctor saw this, they go, "This, you need to." <laughs> I saw. So I just. I saw my doctor today. I, I'm very, I'm very annoyed. I, I, I take Ambien sometimes, mm-hmm. and I need something stronger for for a flight. And I, I, I want this for Australia. I want to be able to fall asleep for this flight to Australia, and then yeah. to Tokyo, and then back down. How long is that flight? Twelve. It's like it's like That's sixteen. Work, I'll work, but I'm losing money on all of it. Okay. Uh, so Tova's gonna go with me in Australia. I'm gonna go to Tokyo alone. So I'm doing shows in Tokyo, but like at a small venue. I've always wanted to go to Tokyo, and and in my mind, I was like, if I'm all the way over there, I might as well do this. Yeah, which I don't know if that's quite the right thinking, but this doctor was saying in in New York, I guess they are very, um, there's a lot of oversight when it comes to any kind of drug that can be addictive. Mm-hmm. So he yes. was, it, it's just like this whole thing of like you, New York will not let you have Ambien and Xanax, even though based on your history, you're not like overusing it. If you're hearing this song, it means we cut something out. Probably Russell being racist. Shh. I think just mix, make a cocktail of of <laughs> Ambien, Benadryl, melatonin, one pot gummy, and a drink. You'll be so fucked up. Tell me that one more time, that concoction. Do melatonin. <laughs> melatonin. Benadryl. Throw in a Tylenol PM. Oh, my God. Do no, Ambien you'll never wake and up. take a drink. You don't need Xanax, dude. See, I could, if I took a 10 to 12 uh, milligram edible, I that's enough for me to fall asleep. On like an uncomfortable plane seat, you can just... I, I, it makes me so tired that, yeah. that, that that's... Which way are you doing? If you don't have the window, you're going back like this? Mm, no, I, I, would, I always have the window. I always book a window. Yeah. I, I just bought aisle. it. You need an aisle. You can I sleep though? Pee. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you not have to pee ever? Uh, well, if it was a 16-hour flight, yes. But uh, if it's... I could... Do five, six hours, not having to pee. Oh, wow. Well, that's impressive. I don't want to brag. I do want the aisle because I hate inconveniencing people by yeah. having to get up and do that whole thing. I, like, feel really bad, and I, I just want to be able sure. to go where I'm going. Yeah, and as a large fellow, I like to be stashed away and, like, be like, I'm just here, you know what I mean, like, in the corner. Yeah, 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 make and yourself so, the small as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> away from the cart coming up and down that, that aisle. That cart will catch you. Yeah. Well, that's why I can't do aisle. Knock you. Yeah. The aisle. I mean, my legs are like long. this, and then they bump yeah. it. Yeah. And they go, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And I go, "I'm yeah. sorry." So, are you flying? Are you flying commercial to Australia? Well, here we go. We, well, we, this is oh. this is the one time. First uh, class. I I I said, which class has the sushi option for the meal? <laughs> uh, we are going. It's not called first class for this particular flight. It's called, and maybe there is a first class option, but we did. There was nothing. Something that is comfort plus, and we did what's above that. I don't know if it's first class. I hope it is because this price was. I'm using all my miles. I'm using all like my $5, miles. Five thousand dollars, yeah. Yeah, like five thousand, five thousand to six thousand. Probably 000. more, yeah. And you're like, it's upsetting. It's so that is much. Upsetting. It's so much. And I've said before, I think these flights horizontal. Let me lie down. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what I'm paying for. Yeah. You're going like, oh, I just want to be able to go horizontal. And I'm like, I'll, I'll stay the horizontal. One, I mean, the one the time, time I did first class, it was, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe. Yeah, first class is Couldn't cool. believe people lived this way. And like, What was that for that you bed, did first class? Honeymoon? Honeymoon, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bora Bora. And it was like, you know, you're even on the way to San Francisco and then to Tahiti. But you're just, you're just, it's a bed. You're just laying and it's you don't even there's a separate entrance you didn't even see the people back there. That's awesome. Oh, can I tell you one of the, the worst things to sun is I'll get a first class very rarely or I'll get bumped up, and uh, it's not long enough for me still. What? So you go to lie down. Oh, really? And my legs are still a little bit like this, and I I can't. That's enough. Oh, there's no sleep happening if I'm like this. Oh, that's oh, a shame. That sucks. That really sucks. <sighs> You know, there's a service now that you can like sign up for that it's just like a separate 
security and gate check that's separate from the airport and they just drive you up to the plane this is expensive just to have that experience it's almost like to, to so that you feel like you're going on a private jet oh that's my next opening for Justin that was exciting I, the next my next big thing would be going on a private jet with a with a comedian mm. yeah i've been on a i've been on a small airplane so i've been, i think i'm over the fear of it would you be scared to go on a private jet no well i mean not any more than normal flying. Um, well, let's go on to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Allie, do you have a this has got to stop? Oh, yeah, I do have a this has got to stop. I, uh, I, I, I hate people. Everyone is calling their ex a narcissist. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I hate it. I hate yeah. it. Yeah. Like yeah. Everyone. That, everyone is so many. Yeah. Like, it's not possible that they're all narcissists. They don't all exist. Yeah. It's, it, and it's just, it's just become one of these words that we're just obsessed with and people like to glom onto. It's just like, my ex is a narcissist. And it, like, people don't even know what it means or they like do like TikTok psychology to back it up. I find that infuriating too that everyone just has like a mini internet doctorate. And it's frustrating because all of my exes actually are narcissists. Yeah. And it it dilutes it. I know. Yeah. I I just don't I don't. It, it's one thing if your ex is like abusive, but when you are when people talk ill about their ex, I'm like, you don't look good right now. I know. I'm no. not just listening to this it's going so like, rare. And and there's this there's this whole thing of like, okay, then do you want to share why you picked them to date and yeah. why you were with them for five years? Like, don't lie to me. There's there's something you liked about them. Yeah, totally. I mean, that, yeah. of course, that also, that's also a horrible look. That's like sometimes what I think. I'm sure you don't watch Vanderpump Rules. But sometimes... My I, friend is is dear friends with uh, Ariana. Ariana. Yeah. And sometimes I think oh. that about her when she's just... And like, obviously what he did was atrocious. He cheated on her for over a year with her friend. By the way, this isn't the first person to cheat. So I don't know. We're acting like it's like the first person ever to cheat. I don't know. That was such a weird thing we did as a... Like, that we're like, oh my God, he cheated. It's like, okay. But everyone does everyone. that. I feel but, like... Yeah, they get nervous if you normalize. I think people get nervous if you if you, if you don't react big. Yeah, then it everyone's was just gonna start it was doing awful, it. and it had the added twist that it was a f close friend of hers. Okay, again, it's not incredibly unique, but now she's like, he's a monster. He's a monster. I'm like, okay, well, he was your partner of ten years. Yeah, ten a decade. You're with this man. Yeah. So again, I feel terrible that he did this to you. Awful behavior. Uh, not justifiable. It's not a great look that she's now saying, you know, he's a fucking psycho. He's a not. Da, 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 da. It's like, yeah. And sometimes, it's like, how can everyone be that? Also, sometimes then they'll find ways to like bring it into like every sort of interaction they have. Yeah. So they'll be like, like the waiter's like, hey, and so what do you want for dinner tonight? And they're like, oh, my ex used to pressure me about what I want. You know what I mean? And like, right. I never knew what I could make up my mind. And you're like, you're like, okay, but that's not really like. Sometimes you're just like, I, I feel like you want to talk about this again, and it's not really yeah. related to what's happening. Yeah, there you know? needs to be some sort of expiration on the subject matter. Yeah. Like, you know, you obviously there should be time to talk about it. But the way that it's just so incessant that everyone is kind of pinning that label on everyone they've dated. Yeah. I, I was at a college, uh, first college gig, gig in quite a while, and I said something about anxiety, and I was like, "Who who here has like struggles with anxiety?" And it was every every single person in in the auditorium, and it's it's with, whether it be narcissism or whether it be anxiety yeah. or whether it be on the spectrum, we really are seeing you know the degree of like we're all talking about mental health more. But then also it's a way where it seems like it becomes diluted in anyone who's selfish is a narcissist. Anyone who feels yeah. anxious ever has an anxiety has disorder. Anxiety. And it's just like it comes to a point where then if everyone has it, how do you yeah. how does it become useful? It's no longer useful. Right. I will can I just push back for a Please. second? It's just that anxiety though isn't a disorder. The way that they the way that they um express like an identifying nature with it was certainly very different yeah. than than when I was in college, which is fine, but I'm sure we all had anxiety too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there is there yeah, there's like a self-identification with it that is aggravating of yeah. like this is a part of who I am and like can't you just see da, da, da. and there's also this like sensitivity around certain like neuroses or like I don't know, like I also think these like these like names for these different things allow us all to become like victims. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that is frustrating that it's like, well, can't you see like, this is what's going on for me. And it's like, 
And underneath that is like, hey, I'm not in control. This happened to me. I'm a victim. Yeah. And it's like, no one's a victim. Sure. To me. Sure. I don't, I don't know. I, I, always, I just feel like the people that I hear, certainly the men that I hear that complain about like victim mentality are always like the guys that I'm like, you have, you are a narcissist. Mm. And I don't know. I, I, I just feel like people who are victims are going to be victims, whatever language they use. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, yeah. those people, instead of calling someone a narcissist, they were calling their ex a bitch. Yeah. And like, that's just what it was. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's just weird where people think that, like, where they can't see that they're going to badmouth everyone from their past, and you're not going to look at them and go, well, clearly. Mm -hmm. It's the same with roommates, where everyone goes, oh, my roommate, they were yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 But did you ever have a crazy roommate? They were all crazy. Oh. <laughs> I had a crazy one once. Yeah. What? Yeah. Really crazy. Which, in which way? Uh, well, in a way to just, I mean, I think they're better now. There, but they, I don't talk to them anymore, but they uh, were certifiably having a, a, an, an issue. Oh, they were, they were, they were crazy <laughs> but, in the but, way no, they No, we didn't know, I didn't know then, sure. you know, we didn't have the language then, but it was like, it was an intense sort of scary thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep those details away. <laughs> uh, do you remember this? Is I know, I started saying, I was like, I just didn't get into away. it. Yeah, yeah. It's such a funny thing to say. <laughs> keep those details Get those details away. out of here. Let's yeah. keep it vague. Let's just call it crazy. <laughs> that was... Back before Freud. You're just crazy. Get that crazy out of here. <laughs> Put him in the crazy house. What's uh, your, this has got to stop. Oh, okay. So in videos, when, um, uh, okay, so people sometimes are interrupting politicians and they're doing things now. Um, and I hate the like nerd alerts who are like, stop doing that. Like in the video, like when the people are interrupting a politician oh. and and then like the person like attending the, the, the seminar, or the thing starts yelling at the protester. I feel it feels like teacher's pet. Sure. It feels sure. a little like well, you're, you're saying, I mean, to be specific, we're talking like like Biden is making a speech. Yeah. yeah someone yeah. says call for a ceasefire. Yeah, and yeah. Someone next to them goes, excuse me. This, is not, get really this mad is not what stuff. he wanted you're like, for this no, thing. No, let the security deal with it. Oh, it's like, I haven't seen that. You know, I feel like it happens all the time. Yeah. Like. It's just every time more and more. There's just there's just people at any kind of rally. But but more more often with with Democrats, I think, where yeah. people shout out something. And then there's the people going like, like, hey. You're not supposed to be doing this that. This is not where you should be doing it. Get them it. security. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. it's just something where I'm like, so. You're like, there's no good place for them to do that. That's the whole that, point is for it to be disruptive. Yeah. And also, like, what did they interrupt? Someone, literally, just a person saying a speech to repeat all agreed upon points. Like, right. what's the point of what's the point of the ritual? Right. If not to have some kind of civic yeah. disobedience. Well, you're like, there's the, the, the only time that they're going to have an opportunity to say this to this person. So, of course, they're going to do it here. That being said, if you're a heckler at one of my shows, yeah, you you rat them out. Yeah. You toss them out. Um, let's see. My this has got to stop. Is so I tried taking a hip hop class in LA, and that's got to continue. That's wild. That's. I, I did it a little when I was, uh, you know, in high school in musical theater. You college. did it here at Juilliard? in New York City. Here at Juilliard. I played different animals. You for years did it here. You um, danced hip hop? Yeah. Wow. No. <laughs> like, not, like, mm, no. like, oh, interesting. And then you see it, you go, okay. I'm dying. You used to post videos of it. Uh, yeah. Are, on I Instagram. Did. Yeah. Are they still up there? Uh, they're, they're deep. Deep. I'm going to find They're deep. Out. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Ask, you can ask your girlfriend to go do some investigative reporting. Yes. I would love that breaking news piece. Jamarco used to be an <laughs> advanced beginner hip-hop dancer. Take a weekly class. And I go to L.A. and, like, it's, it's rough. This is a rough way to start back because these are, these are dancers. And not only that, they're dressed. They're all dressed so cool. Yeah. They're so cool. And I've never looked straighter in my whole life. I'm there in my basketball shorts and, like, my Nike tank top. I look... Hideous. My body is lanky and long, and I can't do the hip move. And this class, after learning the, it was an hour, 15 minute class, after learning the choreo for like 30 minutes, then the whole rest of the class is the filming part where they film you doing the choreo. And so they break it up into groups, but then they go by individuals. And every individual, they're making their Instagram video for the day. So they end their choreo doing like a 30 second peace and everyone goes wild and applause and i was like okay this segment should be like 
the end, like the last five minutes. Yeah. But especially in LA, it was like, it was 45 minutes where I'm like just sitting at the side and I get to do it one more time. It was horrible. No one's posting that video. Yeah. And I think about with the arts, did you ever, did you do acting classes ever? Yeah. I think about how so much of my acting classes were me sitting, watching other people do their scenes. And I think, yes, that's useful this much. And then I think about just how much you spent class just watching other- the whole class almost. Bad just actors filler. do bad scenes. And then just to fill more fucking time, they go, anyone in the class have notes? And then you'd have to hear bad actors give bad actors bad notes. Mm -hmm. And and you were told, well, this is improving you. And I'm like, I don't think so. I think you're honestly like more practicing to be a critic, like giving some notes mm -hmm. than actually doing the thing. And I just think how so much of the arts, mm -hmm. if you if you're don't like monitor, it becomes just just watching other people. And it's like, well, that's not what this is. I'll buy tickets if I want to watch something. That's a good yeah. point. I took like I was let like, him dance. Let him you know, dance. Let him dance. And I just remember I once went back to an acting class. Like I was like, there was a teacher that I always wanted to study with. He did a master class, and it was years after I had stopped acting. And I remember sitting there going like, "Oh, this is bullshit." Once I was out of the system and I went back in for a second, I was like, "I spent the whole day here just watching scenes." Yeah. So I just don't like that, and this has got to stop. Uh, I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Final segment. You better count your blessing. You better count your blessing. Russell, do you have a blessing? Wait, you go first. Um, my blessing is, uh, uh, as many times before, it is it is Tova, especially uh, yesterday, was such a, we were shopping, and she just, we I got that call, and it was just very much like, all right, the day's about, about me. A little bit getting ready and just she, she was very much uh help take care of uh just going like all right our fun romantic sunday is over it's time to get to jersey helped with uh the outfit and uh just talking and very supportive and uh it was very nice to have her there so that's great thank you Tova. you're my blessing so mine is sweet. um this fedex woman uh that lives in my neighborhood well she works at the fedex in my neighborhood and I've had to go a few times to uh, it's the whole thing. The post office is not <sighs> dropping things off and now I have to pick things up. It's annoying. But um, I've kind of now know her. And today I got there lying outside the door. But she saw me and she waved me on to like go up to her counter and cut the thing. And I was like, that was so nice. I don't like, and uh, it, it saved me a lot of time. There I was like a, to think there's a podcast somewhere else <laughs> where they have a segment akin to this has got to stop. And they're going, cutting the line I at know, FedEx. I know. Who the fuck do you but think she, you I had, I'm a surprise, but she could tell that I was, my thing was quick. She knows I was just picking up a thing and other people were, you know, there's like lots of things happening. I mean, she probably didn't know, but she, she was helpful. What was I the package? It. Uh, it was a, a thing from For the Roof. Sure. One of those sex toy things where it was just yeah, like yeah, yeah. And the pussy just like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Allie, do you have a blessing? Yeah, oh my out. God, my blessing. I, I'm feeling, I'm so grateful that like our careers allow us to do things like this for a living. Like the fact that I can make any money just like talking is insane to me. Oh, did you think you were getting paid for this? <laughs> no, this is, you know, but. This is charity. You know what work. I mean? Like it's, the fact course. that, 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 that it's just always amazing to me. That like anyone can do what they want and live off of it. That's a blessing. Also, my girlfriend, since you mentioned Tova, but I thought we weren't allowed to say we're grateful for our girlfriends based on that email. No, you could say a specific oh. thing. Like if she like helped take down an enemy of yours with some of her reporting. She did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also Martin Short coming to the show. Oh. Well, that was very cool to get to perform for, for for someone like that, you know. It's just chaos. We I know. Sorry, I just was adding a thing. No, it was I, a, I, I didn't think about that, and I was like, "Oh, he's, you know, it was a legend," and, and I got to meet him after, and I met him before. But it was like a nice. It was a nice like. You're gonna bring up every time you meet Martin Short. <laughs> yeah, well, you start working on murders, twice. murders in the building every episode. Is like, so I met Martin Short Martin today, Martin but uh, no, no, it was very sweet, and it was like it was very cool to just you know that's cool. God, yeah. we're so blessed. We are. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, so. Uh, final thing, final thing. This is coming out. Oh, my God. Where'd my... I don't think... Did I bring my phone? This is coming out. Jesus Christ. 
In Does it matter? Yeah, f- some of us have shows. Oh, oh you're going to promote shows. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, The weekend is coming out. I, it's uh, Can you pull up your calendar? Open it real quick. I got to fix this calendar behind you. It says March. Oh, no. Fifth. Are we in April? Probably. Uh, yes. Yeah. Keep going. It's going to be. Going. So this is coming out. Uh, April 16th. This weekend, I'm going to be at Comics Mohegan Sun. Oh, that's wow. I, I swear to God, this is probably the fifth time I've headlined comics in my entire oh, life. It's always a good time. Not always. I mean, I've had a good time hope when this I've went time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be a good time. And then remember, uh, we got Downside merch available. Link in the comments. And we got uh, our live taping May 3rd for Netflix is a Joke with guest, we have now announced it, Moshe Kasher. <laughs> At the Comedy Store Original Room, Friday, May 3rd. And then after that, Uncle Function will be doing Uncle Function Friday, May 3rd at 9.30-ish in L.A. as well. And Allie, where can people find you? I'm at Allie Colbert on everything. Also, Netflix Festival, May 12th. Oh, Where? Uh, Legion Theater. Legion Theater. What were you about to say? Yeah. About to go back to Martin Short? No. No, I was going to say you have two more weeks to see me in Titanic. Still? April 16th. April 16th. I, I, I'm done the 28th. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. we, didn't we just say that this is coming out after that? No, you said April 16th. Oh, I see. So I'm we, saying I'll I see have Titanic. two more weeks. We'll see what Titanic. I'm, gonna, I'm going to. Um, and, uh, you know, remember, no matter what we said in this podcast, for all you know, by the time this comes out, all three of us will be single. This is The Downside. One, two, three. Listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.